What's up, traveler? When it comes to a story, there are so many factors that need to come together in order to craft it. The plot, the characters, the world building, etc. It's all of these things that make a story whole. But that doesn't mean out of all these factors, you can't have a favorite. If you ask me what my favorite part of a story is, nine times out of 10, I'm saying the characters. The characters for me are what I always enjoy the most from media. I mean, they're the ones that drive the plot majority of the time. And it's always fun as hell to learn more about them and to connect with them. When it comes to long running series like Bleach, Fairy Tail, Gintama, and others, we're given plenty of time to do that. Whether you come to love a character or hate them, will vary from person to person, and will depend on the story the author is trying to tell. Every author is different, gaining their own unique writing style and having their own priorities. And that's what makes consuming media so much fun. It, bro, it's what I live for, honestly. I have plenty of characters that live rent-free in my head. Characters that I think would be fun to discuss and share what I personally like and enjoy about them. Things about them that I view as strengths or positives. Now, there are many ways I could approach this, whether it be focusing on the protagonist or the deuterotonist or the antagonist. But, bro, I'm gonna be honest, I'm a simp. I love waifus. So, you know what? That's the focus. <laughs> Real quick disclaimer before we get started, whoever the hell it is I decide to talk about, this is not a full character analysis on them. Like I said before, this is just me talking about traits about them that I believe to be a strength or positive for their character and or things that I like and enjoy about them. Cool? Cool. Okay, who the hell do I start off with? You know what? I'm just gonna pick the first one that pops into my head, Yoroichi. <laughs> Not gonna lie, Yoroichi wins the award for most unique character in Bleach in my eyes. And that's saying something. Bleach has some of the most cool, creative, and unique character designs. But Yoroichi takes the crown for me. Bias? Fucking probably, I don't care. The majority of the characters in Bleach use a Zanpak Toe, all of them having their own unique ability. And hell, so does Yoroichi. She has a Zanpak Toe as well, but she decides not to use it because she believes she's stronger without it. Instead, she uses Taijutsu and the technique she invented. It's called Shunko. This is so damn cool. Bleach is a series I got into two years ago because I heard the anime was coming back. And it's a series that skyrocketed up my list of favorite stories with each passing episode. I knew about Yoruichi for a while, and I figured she would be my favorite character. And not gonna lie, it's a tie between her and Ichigo. I just really love that Yoruichi decided to invent her own technique to create something that works for her. And even though I really do want to see her Zanpakuto, shit, I'll take her word that she's stronger without it. It's no question that this is definitely an aspect of her character that I see as a strength. I'm aware that there are different Shunko techniques, like the one we saw Soifone use in the Thousand Year Blow War arc anime. I'm also aware that Yoruichi uses a new technique in her Shunko arsenal, but I haven't read the entire arc in the manga. Maybe I'll read it, or maybe I'll just keep waiting for the anime. We'll fucking see. There are plenty of characters and groups that I would say are loyal. Of course, I can't name all of them. I haven't seen every single freaking anime. But Zoro, the Fairy Tale Guild, the Hashira. And yeah, Yoruichi definitely deserves to be a part of this discussion. Literally, as I'm writing this, the first instance that popped into my head is her loyalty to her friends. Even before we get to see her true form. And even after we see her true form, which, god damn, by the way, her loyalty persists. She promises to teach Ichigo Bankai in three days and claims to make him stronger than Byakuya. During the Iran car invasion, when Ichigo is going up against Yami, Yoruichi and Kisuke save him and then proceed to peace up Yami. And during the Turn Back the Pendulum arc, Yoruichi's two childhood friends, Kisuke and Tessai, were arrested after Aizen set them up. They were about to be given their sentence when Yoruichi rushed in and saved them. After this, they all decided to go and reside in the world of the living. Yoruichi then relinquished her title as head of the Shihoin clan, captain of the second division, and leader of the Anmi Skido without any hesitation. She did all this for her homies. Now, get you a homie like Yoruichi do because my god, she's 
goaded. This is definitely a strength for a character. And that's not even all the examples I could give because again, I haven't read all of Thousand Year Blood War. But bro, even with what I just gave you, come on. Now this is the main reason, or at least one of the main reasons why I love Yoruichi. She's laid back as hell, bruh. She's probably the most chill and free-spirited character in this story. Now, of course, when she needs to get serious, she'll get serious. But majority of the time, she's chilling, vibing, and trolling. Damn! I said this before in a short, girl is a troll. The first time we see her in her true form, she trolled Ichigo. Now, of course, it's also because since she was in her cat form for so long, she got so used to not wearing clothes. But she also did it to see his reaction. And she used to troll the hell out of B. Byakuya. Back when she was still a captain, she would always come over to visit Byakuya to help him train. She's the one who taught him flash step. She's the reason why Byakuya is so skilled at Shunpo. Her, tra her training methods literally involved playing tag. And Byakuya freaking hated this girl, bro. She freaking stole this man's hair ribbon. Another case is that even when she was a captain, she didn't care about honorifics and such. Wanting her subordinates to just call her by her name. She didn't see herself as above them. She saw them as her equals. She never took the job too seriously and didn't seem to care that much about it. And that's probably the main reason why she was okay with discarding all of her titles in the Seirete, enjoying her life in the world of the living much more. And even during battle, she would joke around and talk shit while her, Ishin, and Kisuke were fighting their hardest to beat Aizen. Fucking Aizen, by the way. When she at the time, she cracked fucking jokes and was even bickering with her best friend. In front of Aizen, by the way. I fucking love her, dude. I don't know what else to say. I haven't even come close to mentioning everything awesome about Yoroichi, but that's not the point of this show. Besides, that gives me the opportunity to talk about her even more one day, whether it be on this show or on another video. Ah, uh, yeah, I just wing it. Overall, Yoroichi is an amazing character. She's tied with Ichigo for my number one spot in Bleach. And bro, I cannot wait to see more of her when the Thousand Year Blood War arc anime returns. Okay, one down, however many more I decide to do to go. Okay, we're just gonna go at the top of my head again. Mirako. I absolutely love thrill seekers in media. Characters that love to get their adrenaline pumping. And there are plenty of ways to do that. But the one I'm talking about today are fighters. People that love to test their strength against others for the fun and thrill of it. Everyone has their passion, whether it be arts, music, anything. And for these characters, this is theirs. There are plenty of characters like this. Son Goku, Zaraki Kenpachi, Medio Leona, Mugen, and of course, Rumi Usagiyama, the hero Mirko. Mirko is a character that I've talked about before on this channel. Heck, I've actually made a character analysis on her. Which, to be honest, I don't even know if I want y'all to watch that video or not because I can do so much better now when it comes to the presentation. Fighting is her passion. It's what makes her feel the most at home. This has been her passion ever since she was in junior high gaining a reputation for crashing fight clubs. And of course, we see this in the main series. Literally in her first appearance in the series, she just straight up says that if any villains are out there scheming anything, I'ma be on your ass. That's <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally the second fucking line she says in the series is that if y'all are on bullshit, it's smoke. She's a menace, bruh. When Dobby is attacking Endeavor and Hawks, guess what she pulls up? And of course, during the paranormal liberation war arc, She's the first one to blast into the base. And when the Nomus were in her way, she was like, say less. Absolutely demolished them while having the time of her life. When she got blasted away by the high end Nomus, she canceled out the impact with her legs thanks to her quirk, which. I canceled out the impact of that landing. Jesus, man. These two. These two, bro. I don't even need to say anything. 
you already know. She was having the time of her life fighting these gnomus, holding her own extremely well and taking some of them out, analyzing and adapting to the situation as she fought. She's a combat genius. When you're passionate about something, not only are you good at the thing you're passionate about, but you're good at analyzing the thing you're passionate about. This girl had her whole arm broke to shit, but didn't give a damn and just kept fighting, wrapping it up so she could keep doing her job. Again, after taking two of the Nomus out back to back. When, bro, when it comes to endurance, her and Yuji, her and Yuji are right next to each other in my book. Both of them take so much freaking damage, but they never stop moving forward. They keep getting back up. I freaking love these two. That shit is amazing to me. There's a fight to be had. You better not leave her out of it. It's why she crashed so many damn fight clubs. She hates being left on the sidelines because that's preventing her from indulging in her passion. The thrill of battle. Fighting is Mirko's passion. Be that as it may, she's still a hero. A great one, I would say. Like I mentioned before, during the Paranormal Liberation War arc, Kiriko is the first one to bust in. Once she locates Gadaki, Endeavor says she needs to apprehend him, regardless of if he's a clone or not. They cannot allow him to complete his objective, that being completing Shigaraki's upgrades. If that happened, the series would be over by now. During the fight with the Hayan Nomus, Miracle's having the time of her life, but she knows she has a job to do, and focuses on stopping Gadaki's objective. She reaches Shigaraki's pod but the Nomus are trying their damnedest to keep her away. The second Tomura came into her field of vision, her survival instincts kicked into high gear that they could not let him be completed, that they could not let him be released into the world, no matter what. She says a truth about almost every hero in fiction. They never give up. She endures blow after blow, but she makes sure to smash that thing as much as she can. And she did. She busted that machine to hell, so Shigaraki couldn't be completed any further. She then radios the team and lets them know about the info she gathered and to not let Tomura wake up. Then President Mike came in with the assist to finish that pod off. Again, this girl is the definition of endurance. A busted right arm, busted left leg, and now she's having to endure Kata Re God. Oh, she's a beast. She love her. This isn't even the only example I could give of her being a battle hungry menace and a great hero. But that just goes to show how awesome she really is. So remember when I said Yoruichi was probably the most unique character in Bleach? Well, I can also say the same thing about Mirko. Dang, go figure. And they're both chocolate queens. And at the very least, Rumi is the most unique hero in the series. And again, that's saying something. The majority of the heroes in MHA have an... You know what? She's right. Th you know what? Yo, give me a second. Yo, yo, Oscar, wake up a second. I need your help. Yeah. Majority of the heroes in the My Hero universe have an agency. Hawks, Sir Nighteye, and many others. But Rumi doesn't have one at all. She's a pioneer of a whole new type of hero. She wanders around all of Japan, going from hotel to hotel, fighting villains while she's there. She's a freaking vagabond hero! This also explains how she made her way to Hawks and Endeavor when Dobby showed up. She was in the area, she saw it on the news, and hopped over to help. This is how she became one of the top-ranking heroes so fast, solving as many cases as possible while wandering Japan. Rumi believes that heroes who join teams are cowards because they could be depending on their teammates' strength rather than their own, which in this corrupt ass hero society, it makes a lot of sense. She doesn't want to be tied down by the system of hero society. The main reason why Mirko doesn't like to fight on a team or own an agency because that would take away from the freedom that she has. She prefers not to fight on a team, but she's not completely above being on a team. I mean, if she was, she wouldn't have been in the PLW or the final battle. She might prefer not to fight on a team, but she definitely does see the benefits of working on a team. Heck, during the final battle, she recognizes that Bakugo has learned and accepted the art of teamwork, which we the audience know he's done a while ago. And I believe in this moment, she also learned and accepted the art of teamwork as well. 
she grew as a character and as a hero. She has stated multiple times that she is not afraid of death. If she's gonna die, she's gonna complete her goal first. If she's gonna die, she's gonna go all out first. I mean, fuck it, might as well, right? No regrets left on the table. She's someone that lives in the moment, enjoys every day, because she knows tomorrow's not guaranteed. She lives her life like there's no tomorrow, so she can clock out of life with no regrets. And <laughs> I really relate to that. I guarantee you that the times when she's not fighting villains, saving people, she's wandering Japan, chilling, vibing, and just enjoying life while she can. <laughs> bro, recording this right now, I... She's such a great character, bro. I really do fucking love her, bro. Oh my gosh, man. Wow, this was a lot, a lot of fun. I really enjoyed talking about this. And maybe you have some characters that you would like to talk about on this series? And if you do, let me know. Speaking of which, I have a lot of video ideas written down. Some that I think are kind of throwaway and some that I think are maybe good. I kind of have some self-doubt about that, but... Hey, all I can do is try, right? Fuck it, I'm, 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 fu I'm fucking rambling. Anyways, anyways, I hope you enjoyed your time here, Traveler, and I want to thank you again for coming to visit this little checkpoint. So, hope you have yourself a damn good one and safe travels.